Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. I would ask you to open your Bibles to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, you have taught us from the Gospels that it wasn't Jesus doing the works, it was you. That it wasn't Jesus. He was speaking, but the words came from you. And I just stand here so grateful to be one of yours. So thankful for what you preordained millennia before you brought me here. And that goes for all of us. Lord God, you have a work that you desire to do through us, all of us. If Christ is in us, there's a preordained will of yours waiting to be released. It has been through many of us. Help us to see that it's always you, Lord. It's not us. Forgive us for getting in the way sometime. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Oh, God, your will be done. Psalm 139, in verses 13 to 16, I'll be reading from the Amplified. For God, you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you. For you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works and that my inner self knows right well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret, intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors In the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. I want to use for our topic today, our heavenly biography. And I want you to put yourself in David's place because every human being that was ever born came forth by God. It was God that formed every human being in the womb of their mother. God did that. And here's what God wants us to see. Your eyes, verse 16, saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. What is he saying here? 
He's saying that for every person born, God has written a book about you and about me and what he desires to do through us. Before David was ever formed, God had already written in his book, David, this is what I'm going to do through you. And just to substantiate this, Jesus said himself, Lo, as it is written of me in the volume of the book, I have come to do your will. Jesus already God already had a plan for him, a book written before he even got here. He knew how he would get here. He knew that he would be the vessel through whom God would speak. And God created us all the same way. It also helps us to understand how that in Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, and the books were opened. You see, Hitler had a book, but he refused God. He didn't want to do God's will. There are those who just don't want God. And as a result, they stay lost forever. They seek to do their own wickedness, their own will. They, they seek, this is what I want. I want to look like a God. And not knowing that it never works. There's only one God. There's only one true God. All others are subject to him. But God has a plan, preordained plan, that he desires to fulfill through you and I. We just have to, first of all, believe that, and then begin to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I don't know what's in the book. You do. I want you to help me to fulfill what God has written of me in my own biography. Everybody in here, there's a book written on your life and what God desires to do through us. And it's important for us to know that it is God that will do it, not us. We have to be that yielded vessel of Romans 12, 1, present our entire being as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our spiritual service. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as us doing something for God. There just isn't. I know that's an old saying that's, that, that's been said for years and years, generations upon generations, I'm doing this for God. What can we do for God? God does everything. We live and move and have our being through God. I'm standing up here because God is causing me to stand up here. God, God desires to manifest himself to this world through you and I. And here's a, here's a big key. We have to get into the word daily, you all. We have to. 
our spirit is activated and empowered by the word of God. The further we stay away from reading the word of God, the more our natural man is going to manifest in our day-to-day -day life. And I'm not saying that's going to be bad, but what I am saying is God is not getting done what he desires to get done because our spirit man is so weak from the lack of spiritual nourishment that he can't hear. We have to stay in the word. Our spirit man depends upon that. We have to stay in the word. I like what the Lord went ahead and said in verses 17 to 19. How precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the, son of them, is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awoke, I would still be with you. His thoughts. Now, if you want to know that you're special to God, here it is right here. Every day, his thoughts towards us are multiplied every day. Young ones, middle-aged ones, older ones. How precious and weighty also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them, some of them. And that's every day. It's every day. You know, as I was studying this and, and just praying and studying, God helped me to understand why Gideon didn't respond to the Lord in the way that he should have. When God appeared to Gideon, he said, Gideon, thou mighty warrior. Gideon did this. Yes, Gideon, I'm talking to you, mighty warrior. God already knew in the book that he had written on Gideon that he would be a mighty warrior. And it wasn't until after he, he did what God empowered him to do that he realized that I'm a mighty warrior. And who knows what you are in God's vocabulary. Whatever it is, it's something awesome. It's something mighty. What we have to learn to do is just to yield, get into the word of God daily, and then yield to the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, not my will, Father, but thy will be done. We can, it's easy for us to come up with something in our heads that we think is from God. But if we're not in the word, and, and let, let me back up a little bit. It's a learning process. It's a learning process. And you ask the Holy Spirit every day to help you, to help you get there. As I was also studying and preparing for today, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is it your plan for me today for you to touch and heal, to touch and to deliver, to give a word? And I'll tell you, during praise and worship, the presence of God was so strong on me, my, my legs were shaking, and I, I thought I was going to fall down. And standing up here, it happened again. And I want to tell you, God touched you. And God imparted something, too. Impartation seemed to be a big part of what he was doing up here today. Before I was born, 
before you were born, God already had a plan that he desires to fulfill through all of us. And we have to yield to him. We have to learn to yield to him. God has individual plans for us all. And guess who will do whatever he can to derail those plans? And he's real. He's real. And he's tricky. I was listening to this one brother whom God does just awesome things through. And how, you know, every day he says, when I get up, I just yield myself to the Lord. And every day that I get up, I ask the Lord to forgive me for all my sins. He said, repentance is a big thing with God. And then God goes to work in him. He's just that vessel, like Jesus, that allows itself to be used of God to do what God desires to do. Sometimes the enemy will build hindrances in our thought process to keep us from moving when the Holy Spirit gives us an unction to move. You ever been to that place? You ever felt like you should have done something, but for some reason you didn't do it? That was the enemy. Lord knows it's happened to me. One of the things that stands out, and I still think about it to this day, I remember preaching. I was at St. James, and as I, we had... We had this prayer group that we were praying for Jesse. We were praying, I won't say that name. We were praying for this lady. And this lady needed to be restored, needed to be healed, uh, was, was mentally challenged, as they call it. And we had prayed and we believed God that she would be healed. And as I was on the platform, it was on this side, I can still see it. And I was walking, I was preaching, and she was right there. And I saw in a vision, I saw me leap off of the stage and lay hands on her and declare her healed in the name of Jesus. You know what I did? I just kept on preaching. There was a hindrance there. He does not want God to be glorified. There are those that you and I encounter every day that God, there's an unction in us to say something to that individual, and we have to learn how to yield to that unction and allow God to speak through us to that individual. And they, their response may be one of anger, but that doesn't matter. You did what you're supposed to do. And God will work out what God desires to do. We need to know that as we walk in obedience to the Lord, we are under the protection of the Lord God Almighty himself. Again, Psalms 91, that is the best scripture to convey that message to us that they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that dwell in the Spirit of God, that walk in the Spirit of God, that obeys the Spirit of God, will, he will give his angels charge over you and I to keep us in all our ways. Everywhere you go, your angels are with you. You may not see them, but they're with you. 
you may experience them in an almost accident. They were there to deliver you and deliver I. And they know what's in our book. So the Spirit of God can help us. And the angels can help us to fulfill what's written in the book. And that happened with Jesus, right? Remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? Sweat great drops of blood. And the Father sent angels to strengthen him. Sometimes he will do that. I'm sure that Jesus had a threshold that was much stronger than ours. So he may send ours when just a little bitty thing happens. <laughs> but he's looking out after us all the time. All the time God is looking out after us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a natural man and we have a spiritual man. And that natural man can really get ugly. That natural man will try sometimes to oppose God's word, to stand against the word of God. And the, but the spiritual man <laughs> is Christ in us, whom God desires to work through by his spirit. Two-thirds of our being is supernatural. Our spirit and our soul. The power of God, of Jesus Christ, is in the born-again believer. Christ. The Word of God who spoke everything into existence, except for us. We were made. We were that special to God. Everything else, the millions of things that were created came by the word. But he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. We have to come to a revelation of the truth that in you and I, is Christ himself. Christ is in you and I. And we have to learn how to be yielded and submitted to the Christ who is in us. We have to come to the place where we're tired of the natural man. The natural man is always seeking glory for himself. I want this, I want that, I'm this, I'm that. It don't take much for the Lord to slap you down. <laughs> don't take much at all. Christ is in us. And as we grow and mature in the spirit, he will flow more and more. I have absolutely no clue how much of myself is dead. How much of me is surrendered to Holy Spirit. I, I have no idea. What I do know is I desire for him to operate in me all the time. That's what I want. I hope that's what you want. Because all of the stuff of the natural man is futile. There's no good outcome in it. Because it, everything is centered in pride. Everything. And then sometimes we'll even say, well, God was behind that. That was God that did that wrong thing. No. Nope, God don't do wrong. God can't be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom 
yes. Hallelujah. We live in this world where there are spirits. The supernatural realm is at work. Even right now, the supernatural realm is at work. The Spirit of God is at work. The enemy who is defeated is at work. But you and I have authority over him. That is something else we need to focus on and realize that God has given us the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and to exercise that authority. To let the devil know, I want no part of you today in the name of Jesus. You just stay away. And then let God do it. We also have to learn <clears throat> that when we pray and ask God for something, sometimes we just got to, we got to learn how to get out of the way, quit trying to make it happen, and let the Spirit of God bring it to pass. That thing that happened with, with uh, Sarah's um, maid, it, it's happened to us all. No, it happened with Sarah, excuse me. After so many years, the promise of God had not come to pass, and so Sarah said, Abraham, you go into the tent with, with, with my maid and, and fulfill God's word, and actually did just the opposite. Ishmael, Iraq, Iran, Islam. We can really mess up when we don't let God do what God does. And we just have to believe, saints, and allow God to do what he says. You have faith. You have faith. God gave us faith to believe. God gave us the faith that brought us to salvation. We didn't have it. Romans 3, For there is none that seeketh after God. No, not one. And so Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. For we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. The faith that saved us was not of us. It is the gift of God, faith. If he hadn't given it to us, we would never have believed. We never would have come. We never would have come. The Bible says clearly that there's none that seeketh after God. No, not. So you have faith. And it was because of faith that the message that you heard preached compelled you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. That same faith that compelled you to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord is the same faith that gets us healed. It's the same faith that gets us delivered. For if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth, and God has given us the faith to believe, we just have to get in the word, meditate on the word day and night to get the results that we need because our mind needs to be renewed. Say that again. Our mind needs to be renewed. We struggle sometimes with receiving answer to prayer. 
because our mind isn't yet quite renewed to Mark eleven twenty four. Where therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. There's something else Holy Spirit's been teaching me, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'm learning. Doubt is a spirit. Seems to show up when you go before the altar of God and ask him for something. Shows up and starts messing with your mind, causing you to, to doubt. What you need to know, that's not you. That's the enemy. That's where we get to exercise the authority that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave me now. I didn't ask you to come here. Go in the name of Jesus. And it works. I know it works. <clears throat> I've been studying this for a few weeks, and, and I'll, I'll just tell you some things that, there's some more things that happened. Remember when us three prayed about that? And we said that it would take place within seven days. Did it take place? Five days. This cause of what Holy Spirit revealed to me. Because a lot of times we think that the doubt is us, but it's not. It's a ploy of the enemy. And I could be wrong. Well, when I tell it to go, it goes, so I guess I'm not wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> you know how intimidating going outside when there's hail falling everywhere around you. You know how intimidating that can be? Because I've been meditating and being helped by the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. I stepped out on that porch and that great big old huge sky for probably the really the first time in my life did not intimidate me. In the name of Jesus, hail stop. One second and it stopped. Praying for some other things too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about them. What Jesus did, we can do also, brothers and sisters in Christ. First John 4, I think it's 19. As he is, so are we in this world. He's talking about us being in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit as Jesus was. And we can be just like him. We can see great things. I'm going to close with this. Our thing verse for Church of the New Covenant is Joshua 1.8. This word of God shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate Therein, day and night. That's what it takes to renew our minds. Meditate in it day and night that we may observe to do, in other words, obey, observe to do everything that is written in it. Then will we be what? Prosperous, and then shall we have Good success. 
God is so generous towards us. So generous towards us. Mark eleven twenty three. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in our hearts, but believe that those things which we say shall come to pass, we shall have whatsoever we say. I don't think any of us are going to walk out that door today, maybe, any of us going to walk out that door today with the faith needed in that scripture to see mountains moved. We have to meditate day and night to renew our minds, you all, because we've lived so much in this natural world that we've allowed ourselves to be bound by the limitations of the natural world. Listen. I can only pick up so much weight. And that gets in my head that I can only pick up so much weight. But I read a place in the Bible where there was a man, when the anointing came upon him, he grabbed the gates of the city and carried them out on a hill. That's the spiritual. That's what we are capable of doing, moving mountains, when our minds are renewed to God's word. My word will not return unto me void, but will accomplish, will accomplish the things for which I sent it forth for. And I watch over my word to perform it. God, that's the truth. We have to get into the word. Meditate day and night. There are some of us here that whenever our friends are in trouble, they come and say to us, would you pray for me? I'm going through this, that, that. Yeah, I see. I know there's some of you. Because they believe that you have faith. They believe that you believe what they don't believe or they have trouble believing it. Amen. The key to all of this is the Word of God. The Word of God is supernatural. The Word of God is able to transform us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may do the things that Jesus Christ did. I'm going after it. What about you? And as you grow in it, listen, always seek Holy Spirit to help you. Because he may have a a, a very individual way in, in which he uses to get you to that place of faith that you desire to be. It, it, I mean, you can try to figure it out yourself, but I think it'd be a lot easier if you just, Holy Spirit, I want to walk in faith as Jesus walked in faith. Will you help me to get there? And you have to get into the Word. You have to get into the Word. You have to get into the Word because your spirit man is enlivened by the Word of God. And your thinking changes with the Word of God in your mind daily. God can and God will. God has a book on crystal. 
And I don't think he'll ever let us see it. I, and then I think the reason why is because the enemy could get to have that knowledge and just be a hindrance every time, or at least try. But if we be yielded to the Spirit of God, if we have faith in the Word of God, then our whole life will be a life of supernatural power and God using us to fulfill his will. Every word of knowledge, every word of wisdom, every prophetic word that's been spoken over you is in your book. I mean, that is if God spoke it, if it was the Holy Spirit that spoke it, it's in your book. And God fully intends for that to manifest. But we have to have the faith. Faith comes by hearing by the word of God. Father, we thank you and give you praise. You are always the same today, yesterday, and forever. The way of the Lord is so simple. You said that a fool should not err in it. We simply obey your word. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law, this word of God, shall not depart from our mouths, but we shall meditate therein day and night that we may observe to do, that is to obey, all that is written therein. Then shall we be prosperous, and then shall we have good success. So we just thank you, Father. Thank you for the word today. Thank you for the direction that we received from the word today. Thank you, Lord, that it is your will and your desire for us to be prosperous, have good success, to be healed, to be delivered, uh, to have the provision that we need, Lord. That is your heart's desire for each and every one of us, oh God. And we say, Holy Spirit, help us to get there. Help us to get to that place. Hallelujah, Father, we give you all of the thanksgiving and we give you all of the praise in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.